Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Wednesday, October 28, 2015, around 6.55 in the morning, Dalek, Massachusetts. It's going to be a cloudy day later on today. Significant rainfall in New England, 1 to 3 inches. Some areas are under high wind watch. This is remnants from Hurricane um, Patricia and stuff. So we're going to get wet and stuff. And highs in the 60s. Tomorrow we'll be in the 70s if we get any sunshine. Some news to report. Boston Bruins beat the Arizona Coyotes by the score of 6-0. to zero. The Bruins look pretty good. Krejci scored two goals. Rask got a shutout. Maybe the Bruins are on their way to be good this year. We'll wait and see and stuff, but I still think this is going to be a like an up-and-down team. And the Kansas City Royals beat the the like New York Mets by a score of five to four in fourteen innings to go up one zero in the World Series. Great, great game and stuff. Fox Sports lost power to the game halfway through. That's not good. And also the Montreal Canadiens lost their first game last night to Vancouver Canucks. It's happy National Chocolate Day. Celtic season starts tonight. And that's about it on the news. My first video subject of the day is my review of Halloween Havoc 1998 at which happened WCW pay-per-view at Las Vegas, Nevada's MGM Grand Arena. The main event was Bill Goldberg defending WCW world title against DDP. Plus the return match that was eight years in the making, Hulk Hogan against the Warrior, plus other matches. There was no dark matches for the crowd to see in Las Vegas, so all of the matches were on the Halloween Have It Pay Per View. And calling it the Halloween Have It Pay Per View were Tony Schiavone, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and the Professor Mike Tenay. The first match was for the WCW Television Championship. It was Raven facing off against the WCW Television Champion at the time, Chris Jericho. And this was a decent match to open up the opener back and forth. Ending had Raven submit to Chris Jericho's lion, lion tamer. Um, Raven was on a major losing streak on in WCW around this time. What about me? What about Raven? The next match was Wrath facing off against Maine. Not not nothing special happening in this match. Wrath wins the match. The next match was a sh the winner would get a shot at the WCW Cruiserweight title. It was Hooven to Gorilla facing off against Disco Fever. Disco Fever. Disco Fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Disco Inferno about a 10 minute match. Disco wins by kicking Hoovy in the butt and then giving him the pile driver one, two, three. Um, Disco Inferno earned a title shot against the WCW Cruiserweight Champion. That was the next match. It was Disco Inferno facing off against the WCW Cruiserweight Champion, Billy Kidman, who was once married to Tori Wilson. And this was a great match. And back and forth, lots of near falls. Um, Billy Kidman wins it with the shooting star press for the one, two, three. And then and the next match was for the WCW World Tag Team Championships. It was Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner and the Giant, representing the NWO, who were the WCW World Tag Team Championship champions, facing off against Rick Steiner and his partner, Buff Bagwell. I am Buff, and I am the stuff. And this was an awful match. Halfway thrown a match. Buff Bagwell turns on Rex Steiner to join um, Scott and the Giant. He was pretending to be babyface and stuff, but it was just a plot. It was just a, it was just a, it was a put on just for the NWAO to um, mess with Rex Steiner's mind, but Rex, Rex Steiner forgot about it because Buff Bagwell walked out and Rex Steiner got control. And he beat the beat the giant and Scott Steiner, Big Papa Pump, 
when uh, when Rick Steiner gave the bulldog off the top rope to the giant. One, two, three. Rick Steiner and Buff Bagwell were WCW Tag Team Champions, even though Buff Bagwell walked out on him. And in the special stipulation, if Rick won, he would get he would get an impromptu match with Scott Steiner. And that's what happened. Rick Steiner faced off against Scott Steiner the next match. It was, you know, this was a long running feud. Buff Bagwell interfered. The Giant interfered. St some members of the NWO all interfered. But Rick Steiner focused on that. He overcame that to pin Scott Steiner with the Bulldog off the top rope. The next match was a grudge match. It was two former best friends of the Outsiders, Kevin Nash, facing up off against Scott Hall. This is when the time when Scott Hall was, you know, playing the angle that he was drunk and stuff, which was not a good angle because Scott Hall in real life was battling alcoholism and stuff. So it was a low, low, low to use um, real life problems and storylines and stuff. And Kevin Nash was beating up on um, Scott Hall, giving him a couple of power bombs and stuff like that, and clutch chopping him. But at the end of the match, um, Kevin Nash did not want to pin his friend, his best former best friend Scott Hall, so he walked out, walked out of the match. Roughly count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, Kevin Nash is counting out of the rain, so Scott Hall wins this match by count out. It was a Awful, awful match. The next match was for the WCW United States Championship. It was the franchise of WCW, the man they call Sting, face off against Bret the Hitman Hart, who was the United States Champion at the time and was associate member of the NWO. And this match was, you know, an awful match. But um, Bret Hart wins the match by putting Sting in the shop suit, injuring Sting's leg in the process. And Bret Hart retains, and Sting is not on WCW television for six months after that. He was just selling the injury and stuff, plus I think he wrestled enough of his dates for um, WCW, so he took a vacation and stuff like that. I didn't really like the Sting with the wolf pack stuff, wearing the, the red, red stuff on stuff. I didn't like him in the wolf pack along with Luger. The next match was that Eight years in the making match between the Warrior and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. This match was a very, very much train wreck. A lot of blotched moves and stuff like that. Hogan was using a fireball. He missed a Warrior and it accidentally landed on his hand. It was awful and stuff. You know, this was not a great match. At the end of the match, Horace Hogan interferes. Knocks out the warrior and Hulk Hogan pins the warrior for the one, two, three. Hogan got his win back from WrestleMania six and stuff, and and this was a very very awful match. It, it, the warrior's time in WCW was a flop, and the main event was for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. It was Diamond Dallas Page facing off against the WCW World Champion at this time. Bill Goldberg and stuff, and halfway through the match, the people watching on paid per view did not get to see the ending because the the paid per view allowed a time was over and stuff like that because there was a lot of matches that went way over and stuff, especially the Hogan Warrior match, and it was a competitive match both for baby faces. Um, DDP gave the diamond cutter to Bill Goldberg, but Bill Goldberg. Goldberg kicked out. Ending had a spear by Go Bill Ber Goldberg and gave the jackhammer to um, DDP for the one, two, three. Bill Goldberg retains the WCW World Ch Championship, and both men shake hands and embrace. And that was about it on that pay per view. What did I think about this pay per view? It was an F because all of the, especially the the blotched. Hogan Warrior match and the pay per view ending in the middle of of the main event without prior notice. They had to show the entire match for free the next night on Night Twelve and had to refund the people watching the pay per view by ordering a free replay and stuff like that. And you know so much 
train wreck with this one and this is the sign of WCW falling down and stuff and that's about it on this pay-per-view review tomorrow will be WCW's Halloween Havoc 1999 pay-per-view review from Las Vegas MGM Grand and it's even worse than this one have a good day week sit week eight and our, our predictions in the CBS Sports Spectacular. What's on tap later on today for these video blogs? Like I always say, keep calm. And I'm a Julie Brother guy. Julie Broughton's new six anchor. She's my favorite blonde in the world. And I can't wait for Facebook chats with her soon. And she'll read my comments because she's the best. Molly Rosenblatt. Rocks, has nice legs, is Elizabeth thought so, so stunning. And in the words of Sean Lucha, get out, see you later.